And I'm Sean Ellis. This is my lovely white chocolate, Stephanie Edwards Ellis. When I met her, I was a vendor in the maple market. She was literally across where my camera was and I was where Food Palace was. And as she grazed her way past up the street, my eyes glanced her. And instantaneously, I just moved in her direction. Just wanted to know who is this person? Why is she glowing like this? Our friendship is seven years. Because we got married on our six years of friendship. And our first anniversary, which will be on our seven years of friendship. And thanks God to PYC, it has drawn us even closer. She was the, the choir director at the time, and I was like a what is PYC? police youth club. Okay. And she was the choir director slash uh, first or second vice president at the time. And I could not sing to save my life, but because I want to get close to her, to know her, um, I joined the choral choir. Then and there you now, I realized that the spark is really igniting like a fireworks on the 1st of January or the 4th of July. While, while I was doing um, different seminars and workshops for um, the PYC, I normally use Mr. Warren's phone like, to send pictures and messages to her. Fast forward to the 3rd of February, 2000. No, 19. When we know, I, I know we're talking about six and four, and I said to her, that, If I asked you for your hand in marriage, would you consider it? She said, Yes. I said, Okay, may it be known from this day forth that I need your hand in marriage. And from then, now we started to do the, the courtship. So we move from friendship to courtship and familiar, familiarizing ourselves with each other our do's, our don'ts, our favorite colors, our food, our allergies. And the time of me asking her for her marriage was approximately 4.43 p.m. while I was sitting on the hill watching the sunset. And <laughs> when I saw her like two days after, I said, why didn't you take so long to respond to me? She said that she was feeling petrified and numb from the waist down. And she drew her grandmother broken chair in the kitchen and sat down. Fast forward to the 14th of February, same here. I was in Maple and I called her. I said, Where are you? She said that you just arrived home, she and her grandmother. I said, Okay, I'm in Maple. Meet me at Joseph across from the police station. She said, Okay. So I went to Taste Pharmacy. I bought the biggest gift I could ever find. I used my actually my three hands to carry it. <laughs> my three hands to carry it. <laughs> my three hands to carry it. So when I went to just to be, if I hid the gift with one of my church brother. I went into the restroom to like to fresh up my face, you know, just some kind of cologne, you know, that, that made nothing, not, not smooth anything on me. So when she came into the, the food establishment, I saw her while I was coming, while I was exiting the restroom, and I pulled back my step for her not to see me. Then when she turned around to go back to the juice fountain, I was standing there with her back turned to the cashier. I jumped quickly behind her, placed my hand over her eyes, and then she turned around and she smiled. It took me 25 seconds to persuade her to close her eyes. The time was approximately 4.57 p.m. It was a busy rush over lunch um, dinner period at the, at the establishment. So she, she finally closed her eyes and I indicated to my church brother to take the bag to me. And then I hold it like this and I to open her hand and I rest in it. And, just, and then she opened her eyes. The only thing I could see was the tears, like diamonds, sparkled down her cheek. And the only thing that she could say after she conjured a smile was, all doubts are gone. Fast forward to the 15th, it was a Friday. Yeah, she was inside NCB Bank, which I did not know at the time. But I 
wake up 4.30 in the morning. I couldn't wait until 6 o'clock to go to Maple and I go to every village to finally and bargain village walk through money because it opened really early and I went in there. Well, I was in there looking at and the engagement at the time was civil. I called her and I said, um, do you like small diamond, big diamond, or big diamond? She said, she said like serious session? Said, okay, all right. I know what to do. So I called her again. I said, do you like gold, white gold, or silver, or whatever? She said, Sean, like seriously? I said, all right, no problem. I called her back again. I said, what's your favorite color again? I said, Sean, I tried last night. I said, oh, oh, have you color bright? I said, all right, no problem. So I purchased a ring, preferred to be resized. Well, when I, I exit the store now, I was going towards flights. I, I, something said, call her again. I asked her where she is. And the time was approximately 10, 32 a.m. in the morning. I called her and I said, where are you? She said that she's inside NCB Bank customer service. And it took me 19, 21 seconds to persuade her if I could come to the bank. And she said, yes. So while I was walking, going down the bank, I reached um, Bargain for that. So how would I hide this from her now? What she see me. So I ease up my bag, tuck, tuck in the mouth of the bag, in my, my pants with and draw the belt tighter. So it is behind me. So I went into the bank and I saw her. It took me 46 seconds to persuade her to close her eyes. A friend of mine at the North Farm when National was just opened was there and I and she closed her eyes I and the friend the bag to open it for me. And then I went down on my knees inside National Commercial Bank, Mapen Branch, Customer Service Department. And I asked her to open her mind. Eyes. And then when she opened her eyes, the diamond was so sparkling as the eyes as it was opening. And I asked her a question. Will you take me as a lawful and wedded husband? She was so petrified, it took her about a few seconds to say yes. And because I was so nervous, and so, I don't know how to explain it, but the crowd was like coming in and out, people screaming. I just put the right finger on the opposite hand instead of this hand. <laughs> put the ring on the wrong finger. With the ring on the right hand instead of the left hand. Did you come up on any opposition? No. Oh. Was there any roadblocks to your, your marriage? Well, after the proposal, which was the Friday, the Saturday was one of my cousin's funeral. So I told her to come to Mapen to meet my, grand my grandmother at the time. And the reaction was not pretty. I can't really repeat the words that were spoken, but it was, a, it was a verbal laceration that caused me to just step away from my grandmother and move out with her instantly and go to the store where we take the size of the finger and make them do a resize it. And then I rejoined with my grandmother and went to the funeral. Fast forward now, I went to the country where I was residing at the time to my relatives. And uh, their reaction was like, you got, you got to go mule. It's mad where you can't breathe. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I said, look, you know, since I don't know how to feed me, top feed me, the mule will feed me. And I stepped out of the establishment, took out a taxi, and I said, be a gentleman. Took out my slippers, took out my bag, stepped on a taxi. I need to make a pen, make a bigger car, come up. So, you know, and if you call somebody, I can make a station of my car, I'm not going to come tonight. Knowing her, yeah. Did you tell her that she know about the comments? Uh, a few weeks after, when I, when I was calm down. How did that make you feel? Actually, I didn't feel any way. I'm actually used to person saying all kinds of stuff about me from I was going to school. So it's like nothing, it just bounced up. So you had to grow up with a lot of negative criticism? Yeah, because of how I looked. Where you get your confidence in stemming off the critics and stuff like that? Um, I can say it was through by going to church. Um, I but had a Sunday school teacher while I was going to church and she was always there motivating me, encouraging me and she gave me a particular scripture and it was from Psalm 137 verse 14. And it says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
and trust me that verse stuck with me until now and i used that to build me so right now i don't rely on persons i have an inner thing that an inner thing that motivates me that drives me so no matter what you say it doesn't shake me anymore. was that part of the reason why you didn't believe sean love you um normally when persons approach me and say to me that you know i love you i i, I, do, I don't take it um serious because you have some persons who because they want to use you or abuse you they would say things but what i normally do i and i told him um i normally put them through a test but they don't know that i'm testing them there are some things that i do to test to see if what they're actually saying has any weight so i have been through um a lot of verbal abuse from males some physical and it has caused me at a point to draw a line a very very thick line which has become a wall between myself and the opposite sex because because of some abuse that i i i, I experienced in my teen years i had the notion i hated men so i don't i don't want to see them i don't want them near me i don't want them call me so once they look at my face they know that don't come near but it was at the point when he came into the picture um and and funny enough you know i was actually at a point in my life where i was praying and asking the lord for a husband and the lord stopped me right there and he said how can you pray for a husband and you actually don't like them you have closed your heart towards them and i was going to say lord you know say, I threw your dog. and gradually i started to open up so he he was sent at the right time so i could actually receive him but he said you had doubts so yes i i wasn't sure and even when he proposed in February, I told him, don't tell anybody, said me, I'm you. Because I'm not answer you yet. It was way in April before I actually told him, I confirmed the engagement. The ring was on my finger, yes. But I, I didn't actually say to him, yes. So it took me some time to, I just wanted to see his actions around me and how he treat me to, to, you know, put the icing on it to say, yes, this is the person. Okay. So since um, you two, what are some of the things you like about him? What do you think is the glue in your relationship? That, that, because trust me, you portray a very solid wall. So what created this bond? Well, the fact that he was genuine. He told me how he felt um, he was just himself and and what got me was that he wasn't afraid to go anywhere with me and to own me in public yes in public he wasn't afraid to hold my hand in public he wasn't afraid to hold me up in public he wasn't afraid to say hey this is my fiance even though at the time I didn't actually say the yes yet but he wasn't afraid to let he showed know. that he, he he was super proud of you yes. yes and that was one of the things that made me feel so yes this is the person that i've been praying 